first-person shooters have been popular since the rise of games like Wolfenstein, Doom, Duke Nukem, Quake, Goldeneye, Medal of Honor, Halo, Apex Legends, and so on. 18 years ago, a game that would make the FPS genre even more popular with its many successful titles regarding story, gameplay, graphics, music, voice acting, and multiplayer modes was born. Like the Medal of Honor series, it started out with games taking place during World War II. Consider the greatest conflict ever known in human history. Later games in the series would jump to modern day combat in unspecified Middle Eastern countries, a Russian American war, other games would take place during the Cold War, and later a more futuristic setting with standalone titles. That game series is Call of Duty. It started only on PC, but then went to consoles like the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 during the rise of HD resolutions in video games. This series has wowed many first-person shooter aficionados all over the world playing in multiplayer mode and even took part in esports tournaments. Even some actors and actresses got into the action playing the game and advertising as well. Yet at the same time, some of the games were controversial and also there were certain fallouts against Infinity Ward, as well as trademark infringement claims by AM General. Even after 18 long years, this is the game that most people think about when it comes to FPS games. This is the history of Call of Duty, a two-part episode. The first part will talk about the first three games, the original Modern Warfare trilogy, World at War, and Black Ops. The second part shall focus on the standalone titles Ghosts, Advanced Warfare, Infinite Warfare, the Modern Warfare Reboot, Black Ops Cold War, and Vanguard. The development of the first Call of Duty game started in 2002 with the success of Medal of Honor Allied Assault. Infinity Ward at the start of the game's development had only 22 employees and many of them were lead developers of Allied Assault. The development of the first game started in April 2002 led by Chief Creative Officer Vin Sampella. On May 2003 the development team increased from 22 to 27 members. Using an enhanced version of the ID Tech 3 game engine developed for Quake 3 Arena and an in-house skeletal animation system called Ares. Infinity Ward set out to develop a new World War II era video game that, unlike many of its predecessors, placed more emphasis on squad-based play with intelligent assistance from teammates during large-scale battles. The team also extensively researched weapons, artillery, and vehicles from World War II to enhance the authenticity of animation and sounds used throughout the game. Another area the development team focused on was their artificial intelligence pathfinding component dubbed Conduit. The ability to suppress the enemy with cover fire and clear obstacles, such as fences and windows, was tightly integrated into the squat base aspect of the single player campaigns. The AI in the game was designed to flank the opponent, bank grenades, and move from one cover point to another. Campaigns were usually the primary focus, but when it comes to the very first game, multiplayer modes were tailored to please the modders. Seat Reich, a, le des a lead designer, clarified that gameplay and modes were written in script, making it extremely easy for players to make their own modifications to Call of Duty multiplayer. The first three titles and their spin-offs would take place in World War II. Other games that took place in World War II were games such as World at War, Final Fronts, Roads to Victory, World War II, Finest Hour, and Vanguard. Later games like the Modern Warfare series will take place in unspecified Middle Eastern countries, Russia, the United States, and will go into World War III. The first Black Ops will take place during the Cold War, as well as its remake released in 2020. Then Black Ops 2, 3, and 4 would have futuristic settings. Call of Duty games taking place in the future were standalone titles like Ghosts, Advanced Warfare, and Infinite Warfare. Various of these games will not be only developed by Infinity Ward, but also by Treyarch, Sledgehammer Games, Riven Software, and so on. 
In games like World at War, Black Ops, and others, players would have the chance to fight against zombies. Fighting zombies was a break from multiplayer and campaign modes which players tremendously enjoyed. Some voice actors of the series were famous names such as Gary Oldman, John Malkovich, Lance Henriksen, the late Bill Paxton, Bruce Campbell, activist and actress Rose McGowan, Heather Graham, Sam Worthington, Ed Harris, Emmanuel Shariki, Jason Statham, Josh Duhamel, Idris Elba, William Fitchner, Ice Cube, Kit Harrington of Game of Thrones fame, John Bernthal of Walking Dead and Punisher fame, disgraced actor Kevin Spacey, Michael Keaton, and even Jimmy Kimmel himself. Many known actors and famous YouTubers will appear in commercial ads of Call of Duty games to promote them such as Robert Downey Jr., Jonah Hill, Omar Sy, Justine Azarek, FPS Russia, and so on. Some famous faces are players of the game such as comedian Sarah Silverman and even Katie Cassidy of Arrow fame as well. But enough of that for now. Let's start with the first games. The first Call of Duty game was released on October 2003 on the PC. Years later, the first title in the series will be re-released on Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 as Call of Duty Classic in 2009 with the release of Modern Warfare 2 being available via redemption codes included with the heartened and prestige editions of the game. The first title released an expansion pack in 2004 titled United Offensive which was produced by Activision and developed by Grey Matter Interactive and Pi Studios. The Nintendo GameCube Xbox and PS2 had a spin-off titled Finest Hour, which included multiplayer and campaign. As a first-person shooter, players take control of an infantry soldier who makes use of various World War II weapons in combat. Players wield two weapons which are a handgun and a rifle, including 10 frag grenades and in some missions carry smoke grenades in order to avoid enemy fire when attempting to infiltrate enemy bases or through the trenches. Players can exchange weapons from dead enemy soldiers in the battlefield. Players can toggle between different firing modes such as single fire and automatic. Call of Duty was one of the first person shooters to feature iron sights in gameplay. By pressing the corresponding key, the player aims down the gun's actual sights for increased accuracy. In addition to weapons carried by the player, mounted machine guns and other fixed weapon emplacements are controllable by the player. The game uses a standard health point system with a limited amount of health reflected by a health bar. Med kits scattered throughout the levels or dropped by some foes are used to restore health when the player is injured, just like in games like Medal of Honor Frontline, its predecessors, and Allied Assault as well. In later games, med kits will not be used any longer as players recover health when avoiding enemy fire. Whenever players are killed in campaign mode, War quotes from famous political and military leaders are displayed on the screen. Various quotes included are from famous philosophers and scientists as well. In almost every game in the series when players are killed during campaign mode, war quotes are displayed. The trailer games such as Ghosts, Advanced Warfare, and World War II do not include such quotes. The first game has three campaigns. These are the American, British, and Soviet campaigns. All of these three campaigns fight the Nazis in World War II. In the American campaign, players take control of Private Martin. Martin is a new enlisted member of the 506 Parachute Infantry Regiment, completing basic training at Camp Tokowa in Georgia, United States on August 10, 1942. Afterwards, the action ships to June 6, 1944, with Martin forced to undertake a solo mission to establish a landing zone for soldiers participating in Operation Overlord. In the British campaign, players took control of Sergeant Evans taking part in Operation Tonga. Evans is part of a unit from 2nd Ox and Bucks of the 6th Airborne Division and serves under the command of Captain Price. However, the Captain Price in this game is not related to the iconic character of the Modern Warfare series. And finally, there is the Soviet campaign, where players take control of Corporal Alexei Ivanovich Von Voronin. 
a young volunteer and his fellow recruits are sent across the Volga River, many of whom are subsequently killed when the Luftwaffe launch an attack. The Soviet campaign begins during the Battle of Stalingrad in September 18, 1942. The first game received critical acclaim upon its release. It won several Game of the Year awards for 2003 from several reviewers. It was a recipient of the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences 2004 Game of the Year award. The success of the first game was only the beginning of a franchise that would become extremely popular all over the world up until this day. Call of Duty 2 is a first-person shooter video game that was developed by Infinity Ward and published by Activision. Originally released on October 25, 2005 on the Xbox 360 and in November 2005 on the PC. This game is a sequel and the second installment in the Call of Duty series and perhaps one of the most successful ones in the series. The game is set during World War II, there are four individual campaigns and it is also introduce a multiplayer mode in which players can play online with friends, family, and people from around the world. In the first week of its release, the Xbox 360 version sold over 250,000 copies and by the next year it had sold 1.4 million copies. The story is divided by four individual campaigns, starting with Private Vasily Koslov of the 13th Guards Rifle Division in Soviet Russia battling the Germans in Stalingrad in 1942 and 1943. In the British campaign, Sergeant John Davis of the 7th Armored Division takes part in destroying Nazi strongholds, defending the towns of Britain to the Second Battle of El Alay, Maine. Then it changed to the individual role of British tank commander David Welsh. Then in the American campaign, Bill Taylor of the 2nd Ranger Battalion begins in D-Day destroying various German artillery, battalions, and bases. Players can play in four individual campaigns, starting with the Soviet Army, then with the British Army, the US Army, Rangers, and the ending campaign. As an FPS game, players took control of infantry soldiers, but this one made major improvements from the first game. Players can crouch, go prone, and able to scale walls and other obstacles. Players can carry two firearms which can be swapped with those left on the battlefield and they carry both frag and smoke grenades. New features include such as regenerative health and an icon that indicates that a grenade is about to explode. A compass on the heads-up display shows both friends and enemies and objective markers to indicate that players must reach areas to defend or places where players must plant explosives or disable them. When players take severe damage, the point of view will go red and after many shots, players will die and war quotes will be displayed on the screen. To avoid death, players are warned when they are severely injured to find cover and recover health when it is low. Players can also take a break from campaign and play online with either friends, family or other people around the world. The mission can also end in failure not only when failing to achieve a certain objective and death, but also friendly fire can result in filling the mission, displaying the message, friendly fire will not be tolerated, and in the Russian campaign the displayed message is, you are a traitor to the motherland. The story is divided in four individual campaigns, Soviet campaign, British campaign, American campaign, and ending, the Soviet campaign involves destroying Nazi targets and liberating the city of Stalingrad in the early years of World War II. The British campaign involves several missions on the trenches, historical battles, and so on. The American campaign starts in D-Day and also players must destroy Nazi targets, just like in the other campaigns and in the end, they take a rescue mission. The graphics of the game were enhanced since the first Call of Duty game. After completing missions, there were some interesting clips in the game which involved footage of documentaries that were aired in the military channel. Characters have real-time facial expressions and the voice acting is very memorable. The sounds of the game have been improved since the first game and explosions and shooting sound more realistic, like if players were in an actual battlefield. The game's music was composed by Graham Revel, 
who is known for composing in movies such as Child's Play 2, The People Under the Stairs, Street Fighter the Movie, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the Movie, Grindhouse, and so on. This game also had a side story titled Call of Duty 2 Big Red 1 developed by Treyarch and released in 2005 for the GameCube, PlayStation 2, and Xbox. Call of Duty 3 was released in the holiday season of 2006 on the GameCube, PlayStation 2, Xbox, Nintendo Wii, and PS3. Unlike previous titles that were developed by Infinity Ward, Call of Duty 3 was developed by Treyarch. The game was unveiled by Activision shortly before E3 2006. It was also revealed that the game would be developed by Treyarch, which was set to release during the holiday season on that year. The game will be running on Treyarch's own internal engine, NGL. This game served as a launch title for the PS3 and Wii in North America, Europe, and Australia. It was also the only major Call of Duty installment to not be released for personal computer platforms, and the only numerical sequel to date to have been a console-exclusive game alongside Big Red 1 and Call of Duty Finest Hour. In an interview with Video Gamer, Call of Duty World at War senior producer Noah Haller revealed the team had eight months to develop Call of Duty 3. Much like their first and second games, Call of Duty 3 is set in World War II and has a single player campaign and multiplayer mode that players can play with friends, family, and people from around the world online. A new feature in the gameplay is that players can throw live grenades back at the enemy, and that is something not seen in previous titles. A character that can be positioned in one of the three stances, standing, crouching, or prone, each affecting the player's rate of movement and accuracy. Two firearms can be carried, and both fragmentation and smoke grenades can also be equipped. Once again, like in previous titles, players can obtain weapons from dead enemy soldiers or friendlies to replace their current ones in case they are short on ammo. To avoid being hit by enemy fire or recover health after taking heavy fire, players must take cover behind the walls. Much like Call of Duty 2, when players take heavy damage, the edges on the screen turn red and the character's heartbeat becomes louder in volume, thus indicating that the player's health is low. It can be replenished through an automatic recovery system when the character is not taking fire. The player takes the perspective of either an American, British, Canadian, or Polish soldier doing a single player campaign for a total of 14 missions. Set in the Western Front of World War II, Call of Duty 3 takes place in the year 1944 and contains mission specific to four major Allied campaigns in the Battle of Normandy. The player takes part in a series of objectives marked by their HUD. These include having the character arrive at a checkpoint, eliminate enemies in a specified location, manning a tank, and marking targets for airstrikes. Call of Duty 3 introduces to the series scripted close combat sequences and multiple actions to arming explosives, both of which require the player to press buttons in sequences to progress. A year later, a portable spin-off of Call of Duty 3 titled Roads to Victory was released on a PlayStation Portable. Although it had received mixed reviews, the game still has quite a following. Criticism involved a number of glitches in the game, as well as a control scheme. The campaigns in Roads to Victory are the American, Canadian, and British campaigns with a total of 14 missions taking place in World War II. Call of Duty will return to World War II with later games such as World at War, World War II, and Vanguard. The original Modern Warfare trilogy of the Call of Duty franchise took the world by storm upon the release of the first game in the trilogy in November 5th, 2007. The first Modern Warfare took Call of Duty out of World War II and into a more modern setting. This game demolished all expectations as it wowed many players with modernized weapons, vehicles, online gaming, and a brand new story. The story takes place in the year 2011, where Russia has entered a civil war between government loyalists and the ultranationalists. Meanwhile, a separatist group led by Khaled al-Assad who holds anti-Western views, seizes power in an unnamed country in the Middle East through a coup d'etat. In response, the United States invades the country. A platoon of U.S. Marines from First Force Recon 
Company, led by Lieutenant Vasquez, failed to capture Al-Assad and later engaged in urban combat in a nearby city with support from an N1 Abrams tank. Meanwhile, new British Special Air Service operator Sergeant John Soap McTavish is recruited into Captain Price's team, which conducts two operations. The first leads him to infiltrate a cargo ship into Bering Strait. Neutralizing you know, the armed Russians on board, the team secure a nuclear device labeled in Arabic. Enemy makes a little ship, but the SAS escapes by helicopter. And then, they must rescue infor an informant in enemy territory. Nikolai. Players can wield many types of handguns, assault rifles, submachine guns, grenades, and so on. Introduced to the game are flashbang grenades. Flashbang grenades can temporarily blind enemies, giving players a chance to kill them swiftly. Also, players can use the guns while riding on a helicopter and one of the game's most shocking missions as well. Also, the game includes an online multiplayer game in which players can play with friends, family, and others from around the world on 14 game modes such as Free For All, Team Deathmatch, and so on. In multiplayer, players can obtain a number of weapons and level up to higher ranks the more they kill their enemies. When players have a kill 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 streak, they can call for an UAV recon scan, call in an airstrike, and attack helicopters. The player's performance in the multiplayer mode is tracked with experience points which can be earned by killing opposing players, completing challenges, completing objectives, or by completing a round or a match. As a player gains experience, they advance in level, unlocking new weapons, perks, challenges, and gameplay modes. The highest obtainable level is 55, but on the console versions of the game, the player has the option to enter Prestige mode, which returns their level to 1 and removes all accumulated unlockables. This process can be repeated up to 10 times with a different insignia being given each time. As the player advances in levels and goes up in higher prestige, they earn the ability to customize their classes. This includes selecting their main weapon, sidearm, and special grenade type. Additionally, the player can select three perks, one from each of the three tiers, that can customize their character further. Perk effects include, but are not limited to, extra ammunition, increasing bullet damage by the player, or dropping a live grenade when the player is killed. The player is also given the choice to complete challenges in order to receive even more experience points. Challenges include achieving a certain number of kills with a specific weapon, shooting down a helicopter, or performing a number of headshots. Additionally, when a player attains a certain number of headshots with a specific weapon, excluding sidearms, the player unlocks extra weapon camos or camouflage to use for that specific weapon. At the beginning of the game, players start with the basics of shooting, melee and movements as a soldier. The playable characters are British SAS operator Sergeant John Soap McTavish, who was introduced as a silent character, but was later given a voice by Scottish actor Kevin McKidd in Modern Warfare 2. Soap is mentored by Captain John Price and Gaz. Another playable character is Sergeant Paul Jackson of the USMC First Force Recon Company, deployed to the Middle East who the player controls during five levels of Act 1. Price is a playable character on two of the flashback missions of Act 2. Players also assume the role of an American thermal imaging TV operator aboard a Lockheed AC-130 gunship during one level, and a British SAS operative infiltrating a hijacked airliner to save a VIP in a secret level title, Mile High Club, after beating the game. Finally, players may control Yasir Al-Fulani, the president of an unnamed Middle Eastern country in the game before he is executed although he has no freedom of action beyond turning his head. Like in every game in the series, players carry an assault rifle and a pistol. A knife is used for melee combat by pressing down the right analog stick. Players can also replace weapons by taking them from dead friendlies and enemy soldiers. To avoid getting hit by bullets, players must take cover. However, bullets can penetrate wood, plaster, and sheet metal. Players can also throw back grenades at enemies, and they must also be careful with explosive barrels and vehicles on fire about to blow up. Nine years later, after Modern Warfare's original release, 
the game will be remastered for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC with enhanced graphics using the modified IW engine. The remastered version was developed by Riven Software under the supervision of Infinity Ward. The game was released as a bundle alongside Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Released by Infinity Ward and Activision in November 10, 2009, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is a sequel to Modern Warfare and considered to be the most successful game ever made. Also, in the Video Game Awards, the game was awarded the Game of the Year Award. Modern Warfare 2 has taken Call of Duty series to the top since Call of Duty 2 for the Xbox 360. The game brings a great storyline with many twists and turns that will have gamers jumping off of their seats and even includes a trophy system in the PS3 and Xbox 360. Development for the game began in 2008 when it was still known as Call of Duty 6. It uses the IW 4.0 engine, an improved version of Call of Duty 4's IW 3.0. Infinity War was inspired by real life conflicts when developing the campaign mode. They initially tested the multiplayer mode by playing an in in house beta version of the game. Modern Warfare 2 was officially announced on February 2009. Teasing of the game began in March with short trailers being released for the game and eventually a full reveal trailer. The multiplayer mode was revealed shortly after two downloadable content packs were released for it post-release, each containing five new multiplayer maps with some being remastered from Call of Duty 4. A remaster of the game's campaign Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered was released in March 2020 on a PlayStation 4 and a Microsoft Windows and Xbox One in April 2020. What was criticized of this remaster, however, was the lack of multiplayer, which unfortunately is not going to happen. The story takes place five years after the events of Modern Warfare. The world has changed and relations are strained between Russia and the USA. Yeah, they find someone even worse. The ultranationalist party has seized political control of the country, and Imran Sakaev is seen as a hero and a martyr. The objective. In Afghanistan, a U.S. Army Ranger named Joseph Allen is recruited by General Shepard to go on a CIA covert mission in order to stop a mass murderer and terrorist named Vladimir Makarov. But unfortunately, things go disturbingly wrong. The Task Force 141, an elite team comprised of the best hand group of warriors on the planet, continues to battle ultranationalist forces and their allies in the world. Then, the Rangers battle against the Russians as they invade the United States of America. The gameplay is very much the same since Modern Warfare, and this time it introduces new ways of killing enemies, such as drive-by shootings, planting automatic turrets, and even setting C4 to trap enemies. There are also more multiplayer games in online mode. This game also introduced Special Ops, comprised of 28 different missions and some of them have to be played online for two. Players can either beat the game or take a break from Special Ops and Campaign to play online with friends, family and people from around the world like in the other games. A new feature of multiplayer mode is that when players obtain a high number of kill streaks, not only they call for a UAV recon scanner, airstrike, and attack helicopters, they can also use a predator missile, a sentry gun, and also a tactical nuke. In campaign mode, you go on 19 different missions where you fight against the enemies of the USA and England. You play at first as Joseph Allen in the first two missions of the game as a US Army Ranger, then you play as him again in one of the game's most shocking, disturbing, and controversial missions. You also play the role of Roach in Task Force 1 for 1, and at some point in the game, you once again play as Soap. In Special Ops, you play many different challenges to test your skills in the battlefield. In Veteran Mode, it will take like almost forever to beat these missions. While on Campaign, you collect enemy intel, much like in the previous game. But doing all those things will get you many trophies. As usual in campaign, players start with the basics of firing from their hip, aiming down their sights, using grenades, etc. In some missions, sniping is the best way to take down multiple enemies. Also, this game introduces a new weapon, the Predator, 
in which players take a small remote control weapon and shoot missiles from a flying drone to take down multiple enemies. Using claymores and flashbangs can prove more than efficient against your enemies. In the mission Wolverines, smoke grenades are very useful, especially when playing in veteran mode. Many players who fought the invading Russian forces felt vibes from the 1984 Cold War film Red Dawn. A fun fact is that when players beat Wolverines and Exodus on veteran mode, there is a trophy or achievement named after the film, Red Dawn. Although reviews from critics and players were very positive, not everyone was happy. Because whenever a game is controversial, so many journalists, politicians, and activists come out of the woodwork to blame video games and pop culture on the ills of society. The mission title, No Russian, was largely criticized for allowing players to take part in a mass shooting in order to gain the trust of Makarov. The mission involves shooting a great number of civilians. Players, however, have the choice to not shoot at civilians and shoot security guards and FSB targets instead, which are considered legitimate targets. However, before the mission begins, players are given the choice to skip the mission or not. Even if the mission is skipped, it does not affect the storyline of the game in any way, nor gives players any penalties whatsoever. Due to the graphic content featured in No Russian, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 was subject to censorship in international versions of the game, including the entire removal of the level from the Russian version. Up the stairs, go. No Russian was also included as a mission in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Remastered, but besides graphical improvements and an Easter egg, the level remained virtually unchanged. Modern Warfare 2 also spawned a six-part comic book title, Ghost. This story is a prequel to the game telling the tragic story of Simon Riley before becoming known as Ghost. From his disturbing upbringing, joining the military and later recruited by General Shepard to form part of the Task Force 141. The game also spawned a short live action film titled Fight Makarov Operation Kingfish, which serves as a prequel before Modern Warfare 2. The story involves a Task Force 141 hunting down a terrorist code named Kingfish. It also explained how Soap got his facial scars and how Price ended up captured and sent to the Gulag. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, the third and final installment in the Modern Warfare trilogy as well as the eighth installment in the Call of Duty franchise. This game is a first person shooter developed by Infinity Ward, Sledgehammer Games and Riven Software for the PS3, PC and Xbox 360, while for the Wii it was developed by Treyarch. The game was published by Activision in North America and Europe, while in Japan it was published by Square Enix. The anticipated game was released on November 8, 2011. Unfortunately, there is no plans to remaster this game, unfortunately. Modern Warfare 3 became an instant hit upon its release and also competing for the top against other hit FPS games like Battlefield 3, and it has new features new add-on content, and also a downloadable content known as Call of Duty Elite. It also features new cooperative gameplay for the Spec Ops, which was introduced in Modern Warfare 2. This game happens to have a stunning conclusion and a real kick-ass storyline. Several hours after the death of General Shepard, Captain John Price and Nikolai evacuate a dying John Soap McTavish from Site Hotel Bravo, Afghanistan. Nikolai takes him to a safe house run by his loyalist allies in India, while Makarov's forces storm the safe house in an attempt to kill the three. Meanwhile, the war between the Russian Federation and the United States of America escalates to Lower Manhattan in New York City. Meanwhile, President Vorshevsky is captured by Makarov after a hijacking and so begins the mission to save the president and bring the war to a halt for good. Price, though, has one objective. Kill Makarov. The game continues as a first-person shooter. In campaign, placing the role of new characters such as Yuri, a former Spetsnaz operative, Frost, a Delta Force operative, and Marcus Burns of the British Special Air Service. In some missions, players take the role of Soap, and at the end of the game, they take the role of Price. In one mission, players take the role of a Russian named Andrei Harkov to protect President Boris Voroshevsky and his daughter Alena from Makarov's forces. 
Unlike its predecessors, the campaign spreads over different days. Each of these missions are featured by a series of objectives on a heads-up display, which marks the distance over such displays. Players are also accompanied by a group of soldiers who cannot be issued with orders. Spec Ops once again returns and features a new survival mode in which players can play cooperatively with other players online. Survival mode features two players fighting against an endless wave of enemies, which in each wave it becomes more difficult. Despite being much compared to the World at War Nazi Zombies mode, enemies do not spawn at fixed locations like the zombies do. Instead, they appear at tactical positions based on the current location of the player. Unlike its predecessor, Spec Ops features 48 stars instead of 68. To take a break from campaign, players can go once again go in multiplayer in games such as Free For All, Team Deathmatch, and so on. The game takes place shortly after the events in Modern Warfare 2. However, unlike its predecessors, the story spreads over different days. You play as new and returning characters in missions such as France, Germany, London, New York, and so on. Each mission requires certain objectives to complete it, and also shoot the enemy and avoid civilian casualties along the way. Players can play as Frost, a Delta Force operative, Yuri, a member of Nikolai's Loyalists and the Savout Task Force 141, and also players get to play as Marcus Burns of the SAS and Andrei Harkov of the Russian FSO. A 2010 Q3 earnings call from Activision confirmed that the 8th installment of the franchise, a first-person shooter, was currently in development by Sledgehammer Games and Raven Software and due for release during the back half of 2011. This was revealed to be Infinity Ward's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, with the latter developers co-developing multiplayer. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 was known to be in development after a legal dispute between Infinity War and co-founders Jason West and Vince Ampella, and Activision resulted in the pair being fired from the company. Several dozen Infinity Ward employees followed West and Sampella as a result of the ongoing dispute, causing Activision to enlist the services of Sledgehammer Games and Riven Software to assist development of the title. However, Infinity Ward was still behind the game's development with help from Sledgehammer Games and Riven Software, while Treyarch took care of the development for the game's Wii version. Not too long ago, there was a leak about a remastering of Modern Warfare 3. Unfortunately, it was confirmed that the game's remaster was not going to happen. It's still playable on PC, PS3, and Xbox 360. After the release of the Modern Warfare games, Treyarch began development on a new game that would return to series where it first began, World War II. This will be the second game that Treyarch developed in taking place in World War II since Call of Duty 3. That game was Call of Duty World at War, the first title in the Black Ops saga. Development for World at War began after the release of Call of Duty 3, which also took place in World War II and their first game in the series. The game is based on an enhanced version of the IW engine developed by Infinity Ward with increased development on audio and visual effects. Treyarch utilized the engine to make more parts of certain environments destructible and introduced limb dismemberment and realistic burns to character models. The game was announced by Activision on June 23 of 2008 and later released on November 11 of that same year on a PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, Nintendo Wii, and PC. World at War received positive reviews, however, criticism was due to lack of innovation. The campaign focuses on the Pacific and Eastern fronts of World War II involving the United States, the Empire of Japan, the Soviet Union, and Nazi Germany. It is told from the perspectives of Marine Raider Private E. Miller, U.S. Navy Petty Officer Locke, and Red Army Soldier Private Dmitry Petrenko, and is based on several historical battles. World at War features more mature themes than its predecessors, and it is also open-ended, thus giving players multiple ways to complete objectives. The game's return to World War II reintroduces the weapons and technology of that time. The single-player campaign includes 13 hidden death cards denoted by playing cards attached to makeshift war graves. There is one in each level. Collecting them unlocks cheats for co-op mode, such as reduced enemy endurance and paintball mode. 
the multiplayer mode and experience of this game has a resemblance to the one in Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. The game features six different modes of multiplayer such as Team Deathmatch and Capture the Flag. There are three killstreak rewards that can be used to turn the tide of the battle, a recon plane, showing opposing players on the mini-map, an artillery strike upon the area, and attack dogs, which spawn and attack opposing players. These are gained with three, five, and seven kills respectively. They are available in all game modes apart from Team Survival and cannot be edited. This game also features cooperative gameplay in which players can play together on split screen or online with four others. A brand new feature that will be part of the Black Ops Saga is the Nazi Zombies. World at War introduced a Nazi Zombies mode which consists of four players fighting in a limited number of waves of Nazi Zombies. Players can work together with other people to kill the zombies in a co-op mode, either offline with one, two players, or online with two, four players. Players gain points by injuring or killing the zombies or repairing boarded up windows, which are used to remove blockages inside the bunker and to gain access to more useful weapons than starting M1911 pistol and a lot more rooms. Zombies continually break the windows to gain entrance and to down the players. When all players are damaged enough to fall, the game is over. World at War had a counterpart on a PlayStation 2 titled Final Front. This game differs significantly from the PS3, Xbox 360, PC, and Wii versions of the main game. This game, unlike the main title, was not very well received. Call of Duty Black Ops was originally released on November 9, 2010 on a Nintendo Wii, PS3, Xbox 360, and PC. The game was developed by Treyarch and published by Activision. Development of the game began in 2009 with an IW 3.0 engine that was used in World at War, also developed by Treyarch. The improvements led to much larger campaign levels and enhanced lighting as well. The marketing of the game began in April 2010. Multiple trailers promoting the game and its modes were released from May until October. This game is the seventh title in the Call of Duty series developed by Treyarch and serves as a sequel to World at War. The game was praised for its story, music, graphics, and voice acting with well-known actors such as Sam Worthington, Ed Harris, Ice Cube, Gary Oldman, Michael Rucker, Danny Trejo, Sarah Michelle Gellar, and Robert England of Nightmare on Elm Street fame. In sales, Call of Duty Black Ops demolished expectations, becoming a best-selling game and also winning multiple awards. However, people criticized the game for lack of innovation, linear gameplay, and technical issues. The story of the game is set in the 1960s at the time of the Cold War and Vietnam War. CIA operative Alex Mason attempts to recall certain memories in combat in order to locate a number station. This station is due to transmit broadcast to sleeper agents who are bound to use chemical weapons across the United States. Mason and CIA operative Jason Hudson are the game's main playable characters, as well as Red Army soldier Viktor Reznov in one mission. Locations featured in the game include Cuba, Laos, Vietnam, the Soviet Union, the United States, Hong Kong, and the Arctic Circle. The gameplay continues to be the same as its predecessor, such as carrying many weapons, firing from ground and air vehicles, and movements such as running, crouching, and going prone. Each affects the rate of movement, accuracy, and stealth. The player can drop to the prone stance from the standing stance while running, and can momentarily sprint before having to stop. The screen goes red to indicate damage to a player's health, which regenerates over time. When the character is within the blast radius of a live grenade, an on-screen marker indicates where it is in relation to the player, helping the player to move away or to throw it back at the enemy. Among the weapons new to the series in Black Ops are crossbows with bolts and explosive ammunition, dragon's breath rounds, and ballistic knives. Multiplayer returns once again, with the same features as his predecessor, such as experience points to level up to another rank, new perks, and so on. 
It is based also on socialization and customization. Within the game, players can also customize their weapons. Other new features in multiplayer include Created Class 2.0, which allows enhanced personalization with appearance items as well as upgrade double perks. Weapons are extensively customizable with writing, emblems, attachments, and camouflage painting. Even reticles can be modified. There is more than one style for an attachment, which allows for a lot more personalized weaponry. For example, the player can choose between a red dot sight or a reflex sight, both of which share many of the same traits, although the red dot fills up less of the screen. Another feature in multiplayer introduced is a currency system called COD Points, allowing players to buy weapons, accessories, and clothes. New killstreaks include controllable attack helicopters, RC explosive cars, and guided missiles. There are over 14 stages in the multiplayer game, and most of people often play at the famous suburban-like stage called Nuketown. Zombies mode returns to this game, and most players have enjoyed playing this mode either solo or with friends and family. Unlike World at War Nazi Zombies, this game Zombies Mode and its successors have stories which features cameos from legendary Dead Series creator George A. Romero, only in this game of course. It stars John F. Kennedy, Fidel Castro, Richard Nixon, and Robert McNamara. Special guest stars playing themselves are Sarah Michelle Gellar of Buffy the Vampire Slayer fame. Robert England of Nightmare on Elm Street fame, Danny Trejo, known for his machete role, and also in Robert Rodriguez movies like Desperado, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, Spy Kids, and so on, and Michael Rooker of Walking Dead and Guardians of the Galaxy fame. Despite its popularity and critical acclaim from gamers and journalists, not everyone was pleased at this game also spawned controversy. Cuba has condemned the release of the game as it has special forces strength, but failing to kill a young Fidel Castro, killing instead a body double. The Cuba-based pro-Fidel Castro website Cuba Debate said that the game encourages sociopathic attitudes of American children and adolescents, the main consumers of these virtual games. It's not a new thing that video games are often blamed for encouraging random acts of violence. But time and again, it has been proven that video games don't encourage nor promote violence. Yes, various games had violent stories like just like movies, TV shows, and literature. But the constant reason for blaming video games is due to protecting their businesses and assets and never being able to find a logical explanation for why mass shooting perpetrators decided to take so many lives with them. Because these shooters felt that they had it coming and also that they were sick of being bullied and ostracized. Violence is caused due to ostracism, abuse of power, bullying, and also due to hatred for one's differences, be they of appearance, economic backgrounds, religious beliefs, ideological beliefs, and socio-political beliefs. But let us not forget that people died throughout history and killed in the name of religion in this world. Never forget that. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 was released on November 2012 on Windows, PS3, Xbox 360, and also the Wii U. The game was promoted with a live-action trailer titled, Surprise, which starred known people such as I Justine, Omar Sy, Robert Downey Jr., and FPS Russia. This is the ninth installment in the Call of Duty series and sequel to Black Ops, and a corresponding handheld version of the game was also released for the PS Vita, developed by Instigate Games, titled Call of Duty Black Ops Declassified. Development for the game began soon after the release of Black Ops with Activision promising that the follow-up would bring meaningful innovation to the Call of Duty franchise. This is the first game in the series to feature futuristic warfare technology and the first to present branching storylines driven by player choice as well as selecting weapons before starting story mode missions. It also offers a 3D display option Depending on the player's choices, they can achieve multiple endings, be they best, good, or bad endings. The story of the game takes place after the events of Black Ops and is set between the late 1980s and 2025. 
in the 1980s, the player switches control between Alex Mason and Frank Woods, two of the protagonists from Black Ops, while in 2025, the player assumes control of Mason's son, David. Both time periods involved the characters pursuing Raul Menendez, a Nicaraguan cartel leader who is responsible for kidnapping Woods in the 80s and later sparking a second Cold War in 2025. The gameplay is much the same, but in the 2025 setting, players can fight with advanced weapons and arsenal, such as unmanned aerial vehicles, jet fighters, and robots. Black Ops 2 is the first game to feature branching storylines, in which the player's choice affect both the current mission and in turn the overall course of the story. Known as Strike Force missions, these branching storylines appear during the 2025 storyline and feature permanent death. The success or failure of these missions can have ramifications for the wider campaign storyline. Choosing one of the missions locks out the others unless a player begins a fresh campaign. Multiplayer introduces brand new features such as Pick 10, a new system within the Create a Class menu. Pick 10 gives a player a total of 10 allocation shots in a class, which are used for guns, perks, and grenades. The player can customize the slot allocation to either have more attachments for a gun or more perks. Kill streaks are called score streaks, in which players gain points for certain actions and focusing on objective modes rather than killing other players. Weapons in the game also have a progression system which is used to unlock weapon attachments. After maxing out a weapon's level, the player can choose to prestige the gun similar to how they can prestige the player level and reset their attachment progress. In exchange, the player can customize their weapons with custom clan tags and emblems. Black Ops 2 is also the first Call of Duty game to include a competitive mode. Known as League Play, the mode allows players of similar skill level to be matched together and play according to the rules of Major League Gaming. And once again, Zombies mode makes a return with a brand new story taking place in 2025. This mode features a new map titled Mob of the Dead, which stars a new cast of characters voiced by well-known actors such as Joe Pantoliano of Sopranos fame, Ray Liotta of Goodfellas fame, Chess Palminteri of A Bronx Tale fame, and Michael Madsen. Reviews for Black Ops 2 were generally positive for the story, graphics, voice acting, music, and gameplay, multiplayer, and zombies mode, but was criticized for its Strike Force missions. The game was a commercial success. Within 24 hours of going on sale, the game grossed over $500 million. It had remained the largest entertainment launch of all time until September 2013, when Take-Two Interactive announced that Grand Theft Auto V had grossed $800 million in its first day of release. It went on to sell 7.5 million copies in the US in November 2012, making it the highest grossing game of the month. Call of Duty Black Ops 3 was first released on November 6, 2015 on Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 3 and 4, Xbox 360 and Xbox One, and once again it was developed by Treyarch. This title is the 12th entry in the series and will be the last one to be released on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. The PS3 and Xbox 360 only supports multiplayer modes and do not include the campaign. Once again, reviews were positive but still criticized for story and lack of innovation. Black Ops 3 takes place in 2065, 40 years after the events of Black Ops 2, in a world facing upheaval from climate change and new technologies. Similar to its predecessors, the story follows a group of Black Ops soldiers. The game's campaign is designed to support four-player cooperative gameplay, allowing for bigger, more open-level design and less corridor shooting. As the player character is cybernetically enhanced, players have access to very special activities. The game also features a standalone zombies campaign mode and a nightmares mode which replaces all enemies as zombies. Players can customize their character's clothing and appearance in campaign. The campaign also features its own progression system, featuring unlocked tokens which must be used to acquire different weapons and gears as they progress through the campaign. The game features a realistic difficulty mode in which players will get defeated if they are hit by one bullet. Finishing all campaign missions will also unlock Nightmare Mode, where players can replay the entire campaign with a new narrative. 
as well as zombies replacing most of the normal enemies. New features in multiplayer are included such as thruster packs to allow players to perform slow boosts into the air, as well as perform wall running and sliding, all the while giving players complete gun control. Pig 10 returns from Black Ops 2, but a new feature called Specialists is included. Specialists is where players can pick from 9 different soldiers, each with either a special weapon or ability unique to them. In the later update, a 10 specialist named Blackjack was added to the game. Blackjack is able to mimic the abilities of other specialists and is only playable for a short amount of time upon completing a set of challenges. A new gunsmith feature offers aesthetic variations in weapon attachments allowing various weapon customization combinations. The paint shop feature allows players to create their own custom prints onto specific portions of a gun, further emphasizing the depth of customization in the game. Zombies once again returns with new maps and a new story. A new feature is the XP system allowing players to unlock various items such as gobble gums, Gobble gums grant players temporary bonuses and weapon kits that allow players to modify the appearance and attributes of the guns with various camos and attachments. Call of Duty Black Ops 4 is the last installment in the original Black Ops story arc that started with World at War. The game was released on October 12, 2018 on Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. This game was heavily criticized due to the lack of campaign and also microtransactions implemented in updates of the game, although it received positive reviews and was a digital bestseller rather than physical. Development for the game started shortly after the release of Black Ops 3. Treyarch chose not to create a campaign mode for the game at the beginning of the development, instead putting all their focus on the multiplayer aspect. They cited an increased interest for multiplayer and lack of time spent by the player base on the campaign mode as reasons for why they shifted their focus. Black Ops 4 utilizes Blizzard's Battle.net platform for the Windows version instead of Steam, the first game in the series to do so. Teasing of the game began in March 2018 with a full reveal taking place later in May. Two betas were held for the game, one for multiplayer in August and one for Blackout in September. The release date was moved up to October instead of the series' usual November in an attempt to avoid coinciding with the release of other high-profile games. Treyarch Studio co-head Dan Bunting revealed that a campaign mode was never planned for Black Ops 4 and that they wanted to try something different and make a game that would be more playable with friends across the board, contradicting reports that the campaign mode was scrapped in the middle of development because there was not enough time to complete it. Black Ops 4's multiplayer does not include health regeneration and introduces both predictive recoil and new ballistic system. The game included three zombies maps on release day, four if a special edition of the game, or the Black Ops Pass was purchased. The locations of the maps include the RMS Titanic, a gladiatorial arena in Roman Egypt, and Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary in San Francisco, California. The game also introduced a battle royale mode called Blackout, which features up to 100 players in each match. Many characters from this and other Black Ops titles can be used as the player's character model in this mode. Zombies also returns as a cooperative multiplayer and features brand new maps and two stories that are titled Chaos and Ether. Despite not having campaign, the game Blackout mode has it as a stand-in. Blackout takes place in the year 2043 during a covert mission involving a mercenary group. Jessica Mason Green, a US Army specialist, is presumably killed while her two squad mates Donnie, Ruin Walsh, and Aaron Battery Baker escape with critical injuries. Two years later, Savannah Mason Meyer, played by Evangeline Lilly of Lost Fame, a trillionaire researcher and Jessica's sister recruits 10 of the world's most elite soldiers including Ruin and Battery for a top secret project against an unknown threat. Savannah uses a combat immersion program to train the specialists in a virtual simulation with Sergeant Frank Woods acting as their instructor. 
you can start a war. Many people hated Black Ops 4 due to lack of solo campaign. Nevertheless, it continues to have a following of sorts. Be sure to check out the next and final part of this two-part episode coming soon. I am John of Video Games in the World. Have a good one. Peace.